Waters Brahmin, 93rd New York Infantry, July 5, 1863, near Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Dear Uncle, we have had an awful fight here, but thank the Lord our army has given the rebels an everlasting thrashing. The heaviest fighting was yesterday, and today they are in full retreat, and our army is after them. This is the first time since the organization of the Army of the Potomac that the rebels have met our men in open field fight, and I don't believe they would have this time, but that, as the prisoners say, their officers told them they were going to be fighting the militia. But they found out to their cost that the old Army of the Potomac was around. We must have taken about 8,000 prisoners. The loss in killed and wounded on both sides must be 25,000, and some say the rebels alone have lost that number. General Lee tried to come the flag of truce game on General Meade, but it failed to work. General Meade sent back that he would bury their dead for them. We are encamped about half a mile from Gettysburg, right on the battlefield, which is very large. I have seen but very little of it as we have been momentarily under orders to be ready to move. Calvin Haynes, 125th New York Infantry, July 19, 1863. Dear wife, not having heard from you in a great while, I did not know but what you would like to hear whether I am dead or alive. I am enjoying good health at present. We have had an awful march and a terrible battle. A great many of our boys were killed or wounded, but I escaped without a scratch. It is a miracle that we were not all killed or wounded. We were in the thickest of the fight, making a charge on the Rebs a half a mile through a fire of grape and canister. Our regiment lost a hundred men in ten minutes. Our company lost eight killed and fourteen wounded. Stephen Hunt was wounded in the hip. I have not seen him since he fell. Stephen was a good soldier, full of his fun. We miss him. This has been the hardest campaign the Army of the Potomac ever had. The second in the afternoon was the bloodiest part of the battle. At 2 p.m., they opened on us, with over a hundred cannon. We lay flat on our faces for two hours. The air was filled with shell bursting in every direction. The battery that lay in front of us had 55 horses and 80 men killed. That night and the next day, the rebels retreated, leaving their dead and wounded on the field. I went over the field. Such a sight I never wished to see again. Every conceivable wound that can be thought of was there. There were so many wounded that it was impossible to attend to all of them, some of them laying forty-eight hours in a drenching rain. It is beyond the power of me to describe a battlefield. John Inglis Ninth New York Cavalry. Wednesday, July 1st, 1863. The Battle of Gettysburg commenced today. We opened the fight with two brigades of cavalry and a few pieces of artillery. The enemy shelled us out of our positions. We fell back to the town when the infantry moved up. When we captured 500 prisoners, shelled severely by our own battery, and we lost a few men. Thursday, July 2nd, went out scouting, came in sight of the Rebs and then marched back. The fighting commenced early again. Some bloody work done today. How many that was alive and full of life this morning now sleep the sleep of death. Out of Rations Friday, July 3rd, the fight commenced with terrible cannonading early this morning. Some fearful work done today. The rebel prisoners coming in by the thousands. 4,800 came through town today. The rebels in full retreat. They suffered very heavy. Our loss pretty severe. William Clark McLean, 123rd New York Infantry. Sunday morning, July 12th, 1863. Dear Brother Henry, You are probably going to church as it is about nine o'clock. I saw Duet Perrine yesterday. He was in fight at Gettysburg, says it was the hardest he ever saw, 
lost 26 men in his battery B. I suppose you have heard that Otis Billings was killed and buried on the battleground. We had in our regiment only three killed and three wounded. Captain Ware of Hebron Company was shot in the leg, had to be amputated. The rebels lost a good many men there at Gettysburg. I was over the battlefield, the fourth. Our men were burying the dead, put fifteen or twenty in one grave, or rather hole. Our men were buried separately, and headboards put up with names on. James Smith, July 29, 1863 Dear Brother, When I was wounded and assisted from the field on the third in a fainting condition, I lost my knapsack, including your letters. I was the only skinny atlas boy of the 149th, at least in our company, hurt at Gettysburg, but Dan McCord of Mottville had his leg wounded and amputated. He was doing well when I left him at the 12th Corps Hospital at Gettysburg. I suppose we had about 35 men in our company in the battle. Two were killed and three wounded. Lieutenant Barnum was on picket the day of the battle and wounded himself in the foot by the accidental discharge of a pistol. Colonel Barnum was with us in battle until overcome by fatigue. Lieutenant Colonel Randall was with us until wounded by a ball through the breast. He was doing well at the Corps Hospital. A son of Constable Thorpe had the top of his thumb shot off at Gettysburg. Ellis Strauss Dear Mother, The Battle of Gettysburg is fought, and thank God the Army of the Potomac has been victorious. I took part in the battle with my regiment on the 2nd, and it has been my good fortune to escape unharmed. I am well, and so are the rest of the boys in the company. I cannot tell yet what the loss of our regiment is. We have many missing who may be either killed, wounded, or taken prisoners. The loss in the regiment is, as far as I know, killed 10, wounded 53, missing 68. Our Corps, the third, has not started yet, but we are expecting to go every minute. The boys are all confident that we will whip Lee's army so that he will not be fit to do anything more for some time to come.